Hi everyone, good to see you. Hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm here to let you know kind of what's been going on with me. We've had quite a few months since the last update in April when a lot of things were going on and now there's a lot more going on just around me but uh, we're we're gonna try and just focus on me today. There's plenty to talk about. Um, so for whether this is your first time listening or you followed me the whole way through, I'm going to try and get a lot of good information here and make it easy for you guys to follow along. Um, and yeah, we're going to do that by letting you know uh, first kind of how everything sort of started with me. We're going to cover uh, all the way up until the last update in April. And then, you know, we're going to go up until late November where we are today. And I'm going to add in, you know, whatever I think I need to do. And I'll take breaks in the story where I need to. And we'll do the symptom comparison from then to now and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, lots of things, like I said, have changed in that time. Like the rollback era, comp competition changing around it, Nintendo ce cease and desisting, the metagame dock dropping. Like, so much is going on. And it is, in a way, like, it, as turbulent as it is, I mean, this can be a time for growth for all of us. And that's kind of what I'm uh, trying to use quarantine for and everything like that. And so it's my hope to at least, if I can give you guys nothing else, to encourage you with that. But anyway, let's kind of get into why you're here, the health stuff. So, um, it kind of, I start as I've often have by noticing that something was really off when I went to the first summit in late 2015, so that's about five years ago now. Um, I was diagnosed with low testosterone and vitamin D. Um, and a lot of the effects of that that I noticed were things like low energy, very intense brain fog, poor memory, a lot of aches and pains, difficulty sleeping, things like that. Um, and once I knew there was an issue, I did what I could to try and treat it. I went you know, pretty much the regular route that everyone suggests and I uh, tried hormone replacement therapy with testosterone. Um, it messed up my heart, made sleeping even harder helped a little bit but it I could tell it was not going to be a sustainable solution when I got off it it made my testosterone even lower um, I went to an endocrinologist afterward um, and I tried some Clomid from them which did help more with less poor side effects but I had to end up getting on an estrogen blocker um, because that was also raising that for me and um, there were still rough side effects still had heart issues by the end of that too so that kind of left me stuck because you know the clomid had been considered such a reliable cure and I was very kind of lost and not sure what to do uh, so I ended up deciding to go you know a more holistic route with it and I um, to basically kind of assume that the low testosterone was more of an underlying problem for maybe something that you'd call chronic fatigue that's kind of the name I give to it but obviously chronic fatigue is this big umbrella uh, term um, but anyway uh, I first turned to diet and it did help with weight which was another issue and, um, and it did help some mental clarity and help things a little bit um, and I looked kind of around at different diets that uh, and experimented and finally found something that felt good for me and you know if you're because there's so much information about that out there and I think the most important thing is if you shop around and and find something that feels good or you play around with it, that's going to be a whole lot better than what everyone's saying is, is this or that because, you know, people's bodies are different and um, your journey is your own, right? So be sure to take care of yourself. Um, I'm going to try and include some things in here to try and help people out too because I want this to be beneficial, not just for people understanding what's going on with me, but for them too. Um, but yeah, I um, diet didn't get me all the way. Maybe I, you know, some people think that it could could have if I kept looking but instead what I found while I was looking was um, an, a more unusual type of um, person who could help me in late 2017 so that's about three years ago and they worked in a new way that I thought was really neat they worked in a variety of physical levels and I felt like it synergized well with my eating and um, so I kind of was able to grow uh, slowly but steadily from there up to a certain point probably for about a year and then I feel like we kind of tapped out um, but they got me to the point where I was able to stream and they kind of felt like I needed something new. And so, uh, yeah, everything kind of worked out at a really interesting time. I started streaming again, April 2019. And um, thanks to everyone supporting me, I, I had the opportunity to find something new. Um, and I had just built up enough energy and clarity from where I couldn't hold a conversation for five minutes without crashing for the rest of the day to being able to stream 
melee type stuff for two to three hours a day. So it's, it's been big improvement already in that time. And I would thank you guys for the help getting me that far. Um, and then, you know, as I looked and I found someone in the summer of 2019, so we're a little over a year ago now, um, I found someone that was, you know, absolutely wonderful. They embodied happiness. They knew how to work on um, even more physical levels and this time as well, mental and emotional levels. And that allowed us to kind of go deeper because we're integrating more things. Um, the previous person worked together with them, with me for a little while, but I ended up, um, but around quarantine, we stopped working together. And this was pretty hard for me because I really didn't want to do it. I'd been attached to that person, but I could recognize that it was kind of time to move on. But yeah, it was, it really tore me up for a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was also part of my, part of my growth. So uh, in the end, you know, I've looked back and I'm glad I did that. And, and yeah, the person and I that I met last year, we work online, so there's no worry about that if people have a concern in that way. But yeah, also a little before quarantine, just to let you guys know how things were going for me, I ended up going to uh, Genesis, so that's early this year, and that was absolutely terrifying because uh, when I initially was encouraged to do it, um, I said, there's no way I'm not going to be able to handle it. I'm going to crash because I still felt fairly tired all the time. Uh, but, you know, I went and I had and I did crash. But, you know, my second wins, they kind of came through and they really got me going. And and I realized that I had even in the state I was in back then, I had more than I even realized. And that was wonderful um, to be able to go around and talk to everyone. I didn't end up playing the game, but I talked to a lot of people and it was very encouraging and pretty upbeat and that was a ton of fun and you know now when I think about if someone asked me if I could go and do that I think that would be even easier it's still not perfect and still be really hard to play the game and to talk to people but I think it'd be even easier now and it doesn't sound it doesn't sound scary to me partly because I've done it but <laughs> um anyway so that's been so we've had a lot of progress already up to the last health update because that was all before um, April but kind of catching all the way up you know let's kind of talk about symptom comparison let's talk about um, where we are now and, and see where we are before from what I said before and so I'm going to kind of compare this on along eight dimensions and we'll say roughly how things have changed sometimes I'll say what was happened before and what after and you know you guys know the drill so anyway the first thing is sleep um, before in April, it took me about an average of 60 minutes to fall asleep. Now the average is probably about 45 minutes. I don't really track it anymore because it's it's a little variable based on things. Like if I know I'm in, if I have a bit of a mood that day, I know it's a bad mood. It's going to take me longer. Or if I'm if I stayed up longer, it'll be a little bit faster. Or you know, so on and so on. So, but still, I know it's been it's come down, and that's been really nice. And uh, also, uh, you know, getting to sleep and getting out of bed, um, which, you know, is it's still a challenge for me a little bit. It takes me it can take me up to 30 minutes uh, some days. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I've adapted way better to daylight savings, to schedule changes, like if I need to go home or or I have to do an esports thing or whatever, that's all gotten easier. And um, when I was running, which we're going to talk about in a second, um, I was even I was getting up much faster than that. So, you know, the average for the 30 minutes would actually be lower than that if we count that in. So that's pretty good. Um, second dimension, running. That went pretty well. I talked about it before. Um, I was only getting about a mile or something and really struggling with that. But now we, I built up my stamina and I was eventually running about two and a half to three miles a day for four days a week. And I ended up maxing out at three and a half miles while still maintaining that high average. So it didn't make me crash. And that was really cool. I, I couldn't believe I was doing that. It was, but I, you know, I slowly, gradually worked my way up. And um, you know, I encourage. And that's kind of what I said before: is when you, when you are, because I was someone that always wants to be all or nothing with things. And this has really forced me to um, take more of a gradual approach. Say, okay, let's do this one step at a time. Let's figure this out. Let's really break down where, where the body says this is enough. And let's not go past that. And and I have a little more to say about that, um, such as uh, one downside of all this running was that I did get some leg pain in one of my legs, um, which was more, probably more due to not buying new running shoes soon enough. But um, there might be other reasons as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
Um, and there was also a light testosterone supplement I was taking, um, nothing hormonal directly, something more indirect, but I quit taking that when I was also running really far. So all that's really good. Um, not taking any sort of supporting supplement right now. So very happy about all that. Uh, third dimension, energy. It increased so I could run, practice melee, stream longer than usual if I wanted to. It was still hard, but it was possible. And I even hit new streaming record lengths with my current longest being over 11 hours and 45 minutes, although that is dead by daylight. That is not melee. DBD has been much easier for me to stream for a variety of reasons. Um, but yeah, so, um, and I didn't run or practice melee that day. And um, even when I do those really long ones, it wipes me out for the weekend, which is why I do that on Fridays. Um, but still, it's real growth, right? It's a, it's a big thing, and I'm very happy about it. Um, my melee stamina has improved and rollback is out, which is really cool. So I get to see exactly where I am and not an approximation of it based on like weird net play lag so much of the time. Um, so I'm playing more honestly and authentically, but it also means I'm playing people that are able to play better because there's less lag for them too, but it also means that I can play better. And being able to play better also means that I have to focus more. And so being able to stream my regular three hours of melee is really good. But then I've actually been able to stream about three and a half hours a little more recently, which has been awesome. Um, and granted, sure, this is these are subscribers and not top 100 players, but uh, it's absolutely growth. And I, you know, I don't think there's any reason to take away from that. Yeah, be sure to celebrate your wins, you know, like I want to clarify it so I'm clear about where we are, but I also want to let you guys know that I think this is a good thing. And I think we should be pretty happy about it. Um, speaking of being pretty happy about it, uh, number four, emotionally, so many less days of wallowing and negativity and if, and reacting really strongly to something negative and holding on to it for a long time. I've been able to pull myself out of it much more is what I'm saying. Um, and I've developed more ways of kind of catching myself when I kind of start getting in that headspace. Um, one thing I've been doing lately is I'm actually saying when I get like a thought, like if, you know, someone someone says, oh, you know, what do you think about this player saying you're not going to come back or whatever? And I I don't say it out loud, but I think to myself, it's an interesting point of view they have. Or, you know, if I say to myself, like if I have a doubt about it, it's an interesting point of view that I have that point of view. And I don't say it with judgment or malice or anything like that. I say it honestly. And when I do that, I'm able to kind of take myself out of that headspace and say, okay, well, how can I think about this instead? How can I think, you know, of the gains I've made? How can I think of, you know, where I actually am as opposed to putting all of this judgment on it? And, and that has been pretty helpful, and I hope some of you guys will give that a shot. Um, you know, I'm also spending time visualizing things I like or want, um, and I've talked about it some before, but I'm getting into more specific nuances of it, and it, and it feels pretty good, and it feels like I'm exercising a new muscle. Um, but yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a lot out there that I recommend you guys to try. Just you know, um, if you're looking for something new and it, even if people have said, oh, this is weird, something like affirmations or something, which I always thought was weird, you know, there's no harm in trying something, right? Especially if it's, you know, doesn't, it, doing an affirmation doesn't cost you anything. So there's, <laughs> there's no loss, right? To see how it makes you feel. I think that's pretty important. Number five, brain fog. It's lessened and it's getting closer to normal. Um, and we have a better average and it even keeps me quick witted for a lot of the longer streams. And there are some times where I will hunt for words, or I'll give lazy responses, or I get tongue-tied when I'm reading a chat message or something. But given I'm also trying to, or I'm also projecting myself with more energy, um, it's kind of good that everything is kind of just improved together. So I'm happy about that. Number six, my eyes, they've been able to handle longer streams so long as I take care of them by getting more up-to-date glasses, monitors, and settings. And I've been working on a lot of that. If you guys have been in the stream, you know all about that. Been quite a journey. Um, and I've been also looking at screens a little less at night and in the morning, and so there's less strain. Um, that's all been really good. Um, but yeah, the, the strain can be there if I could do the really long ones, but that's lessening if I do more and more good stuff. And then motivation, number seven. It's uh, it, Before I was talking about how it was rising. Now I don't feel so controlled by bursts of it. Like if I'm like, oh, you know, I'm really excited. I really want to get this done. I have to be thinking about it. I have to be going all the time for it. And now I kind of feel like, okay, I'm happy with this. I'm glad to be excited. What can we do to apply some of that? And how can we still balance rest? Because I, you know, there's so much of me that wants to just be, we need to go, we need to do. 
and I've really been encouraged so much um, over this time, not, not just quarantine, but over this time just in general, something for me to learn about was the balance between rest and action and, and, and resting, giving meaning to your action. And by that I mean um, you rest so that you can think about the importance of your actions and not do them for the sake of doing them. And when you're acting, you understand that you're doing it meaningfully and you know why you're doing it and you know what you're trying to create. You're not doing it because you, you feel compelled to. And I think those I think that's very important. Um, I've been really learning a lot more about that and that's been really good for me. Um, but yeah, the last, I was talking about my stomach healing more, which is good. Now there's like a weird burp issue that I've had for a little while, but that's already been kind of reduced and... Uh, you know, I'm still feeling, and I'm getting full faster, and I'm getting more energy back from food faster. This can still be improved too, but I would say that that's either been at least about the same as it was a few months ago, or you know, just better. Because you know, it's hard for me to fully remember, but I think it was in the process of really picking up then, and I think it just continued, which was nice. But yeah, kind of as an overall past, I felt like uh, overall before, I felt like I was having much more normal feeling moments, and now I feel like I'm much more aware to know that I'm not. Where I, whereas what I thought was normal before, I realized is just, you know, much closer and there are more layers of understanding I'm getting back. Um, but, you know, I, I'm still growing a whole lot over time and I'm hitting days, days or streams or at least hours more and more often of sort of normal or closer to normal and then closer than that, closer and closer than that, closer than that, closer. And, and you know, it's, it's been really nice, especially in the past month. Um... And of course, uh, you know, well, even before that, you know, I now have a goal and I'm very happy to say this, but um, I have a goal and I feel much more confident about it now that that I'm going to not go back to like I've been saying normal and I've been saying normal and and normal was what things were before. And when you guys see the documentary, I guess this will be weird if you watch the documentary and then you come back and see this. But if you see the documentary, you'll see that like. The old normal, while it had a lot of really good things, it had things that I didn't want as well. And so I'm actually aiming to go well past that normal. I'm, wa I'm wanting to be, you know, just the best parts of myself. And, and, not, and not in a narcissistic way or better than other people way, but just a way that allows me to really enjoy life and give more to people and things like that. And I'm, and I'm starting to, and I've been believing in that much more lately. And that's been, and that's been nice. And maybe it's not, this is, none of this is the exact perfect news we all wanted at this time, but there's a lot of good here. And I really do hope we can focus on that. Um, but let's kind of talk about, um, let's kind of talk about, you know, things past the update and kind of a little bit more of the story because there's a few more things I want to get to a couple really important notes a couple things that um, I really wanted to highlight here and one of them is when I was working with just this one person individually um, I eventually finally felt like we caught up on all of this emotional stuff that I've been working on before Apex 2015 and we were going to start going into more um, and that's exactly what we did um, I deliberated a lot on whether I tell you guys about this, but we talked about it and there's a certain way I want to present it, but I discovered that I had experienced a trauma of a certain sort and I had not realized it until we were working and it just kind of was one of the things that came up. Um, it's not something I want to go into the details of a bunch because it's, I don't believe that should be the point of what I talk about here. Um, I more so want to say this is something that can happen to people. It's real. It can have you know, all kinds of effects. Um, and this is also partly my explanation for what's been going on. I mean, there are quite, there are some things that I haven't mentioned and I believe this can give an insight into some of the things, some of the reasons. And I hope this is reasonable for you guys. Um, but yeah, I hope, and I'd also like to add that my approach to working with this has not been to make me feel lesser than or anything like that, but to make sense of it and to use it to become stronger and um, a big part of the reason outside of explaining this is to encourage people that you know if if something happens they can be okay and they can become stronger too they don't have to be defined by these experiences and that's my sincere hope for any for everyone out there really um, to go to a lighter note let's talk about running um, I stopped doing so in July. I stopped doing that because of pain in my leg, one of my legs, like I said. And I felt, and I'm thinking back on it now, and I feel like I ignored what my body wanted some. Um, 
because you know there was pain that had been increasing and I was like I really just want to go farther I want to go farther I need this I need to be better you know I was I was really pushing right um, and so the, I haven't had the leg pain in months so it didn't stay around very long but I still kind of waited and I spent time that was when I was really learning more about rest and then I you know over the past couple weeks or so I've really been thinking more about listening to my body and I've done what I've been recommended to do from the start and just do every few days I'll do a sprint for as long as I can maybe once in a while I'll go for a walk and I've and I'll go until my body says that's enough and I said okay and I and I've never really exercised in that kind of way before because I always like oh I need to push past what's comfortable and and I'm sure there's a place for that uh but there's also a place for honoring your body and, and, and working with it. And I think there's a lot of good harmony that comes from that. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I think this is I'm a sign that I'm approaching myself just more gently and, and honestly overall, which is, I think, a good sign. And uh, so hopefully something encouraging for you guys. Um, and maybe you want something tangible that things have changed. And so I have something tangible for you guys. Um, that would be uh, my nails, uh, my fingernails to be specific. Let me see how these look. Well, you can see some of them. Now, you can also see that they're not perfectly even, but I'll explain that in a moment. So I'd first like to say that, um, you know, why does this matter? They used to be super short. They used to be very short. Like, you know, what you saw there was them being like really long. Here, one more time. Like, well, they're not really long, but I mean, they're not, you know, <laughs> but they're, they're kind of normal looking kind of, and they used to be very short down to the, down to the nubs. And they would be like that because I would have this anxious habit of picking them, picking at them and, and wearing them down. I'd be doing that, you know, all the time. Um, and something that the person that I was working with really pointed out was I could look at this as like a picking away at the self. And that really kind of stuck with me. And it made me think that, you know, this is something I don't have to do to myself. I, you know, I want to treat myself better than this. And so I got a, uh, <laughs> I got a fidget cube. Uh, I'm 30 now, so I'm trying to keep up with the zoomers, I guess. But um, it kind of takes the nervous tension out of my hands. And that's been really good. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not the answer for everyone, but it's been, it's been nice. And uh, as you can see, I need practice with uh, clipping my nails. But, um, you know, it's a it's a tangible sign that something else is is progressing um, yeah so I hope you guys like that and a final optimistic note a lot of people in my stream even the regulars that can see me all the time and might miss more gradual changes probably for about the past month have been saying you know you've been looking a lot healthier you know you're looking pretty good and and people once in a while would say it just over time but it's been quite a bit in the past month and so I think that's really cool and, I, and and you know I haven't gone back and looked at the April update but I guess if you wanted to you could probably compare and the way I'm thinking I am doing this and the way I was before I believe there should be some pretty good differences but you know um, I guess we'll see right um, but yeah I think we're not only on the right track but there really is something beautiful going on here and I and I encourage you to enjoy that with me but yeah um, yeah, again, I really wish I could tell you guys what we all really want me to say during this time with everything going on. But uh, I think it'd be important to say that hope is what we need really more than anything else right now. And I'm still offering that. Um, that's kind of what got us to where we are in Melee. That's kind of got me where I am right now. And, uh, you know, I think there are many good, there are many more good things to come for me and for Melee and everything like that. So, on those good notes, um, that's about it. Thank you guys for caring. Thank you for having heart. Um, thanks for taking what you find useful from this. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for, thanks for caring. Again, like I said, uh, I can't wait to celebrate with everyone for the documentary and all the good things to come. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See ya.